So I have just added an extra page at the beginning because I just want to do a little bit of an intro to this unit um, before we actually start getting into the nitty gritty so I can give you a little bit of context as to what we're doing, okay? This first unit is on quadratic, oh, I gotta make this thinner. Functions and equations. Okay, um, now quadratic functions and equations. I'm just going to remind you when you looked at linear functions last year, okay, linear functions took the form either y equals mx plus b, yeah, that sounds familiar, or in function notation, f of x equals mx plus b. Yeah? Okay. Quadratic or a quadratic function, I should say, takes the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c or f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the only condition, and a, b, and c are numbers, okay, those are constants. The only condition is that a can't be zero because if a is zero, then the x squared term just goes away. So basically, you have to have like an x squared term in there. Or the degree of the function has to be 2. Okay? That's the form of a quadratic function. Now, if you look at the graph of a quadratic function, I'm not going to do this with my smart board pen because these, I think, are quite expensive to replace. But I'll do it with one of these. It looks like this. Okay? It takes this path like that. Have you seen that kind of path before? You throw something in the air and it kind of goes up and then it goes down again? Yeah? Okay. So that's called a parabolic path. It's pr the path of anything that is like projectile motion. Okay? So the graph... looks like this or like this. In the case of my pen, it was the second one, right? Because it goes up and then it goes down. So you can imagine that this type of function is going to have lots and lots and lots and lots of applications. And we're going to get into those over the course of the unit. Okay? Um, that's a quadratic function. A quadratic equation basically just means that we're using one variable instead of two, okay? So it might look like something like this. Okay, that's a quadratic equation. It could be something like this. X squared equals 25. That's a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation is any equation that has a variable squared term. Okay? Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to review factoring. So you can imagine why, if these are the types of functions and equations that we're dealing with, factoring might come into play. Right? We may want to be able to manipulate what the format of this function looks like or the format of this equation looks like in order to be able to tell something about the function or to be able to tell something about the equation. Okay? And so that's our goal for today, just to review factoring 
so that we can use those skills later on in the unit to be able to do things either with the function or with the equation. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right, so I'm just going to again add a page and I'm just gonna do a little bit of an overview of factoring very, very quick and then we're gonna get into some examples, okay? Okay, so last year you did a couple different types of factoring. You, and sometimes by the way, you did more than one type of factoring in a single polynomial, right? Sometimes you had to kind of do it in two steps. So one thing you may have had to do is factor out a greatest common factor, right? So this may have looked like something like this. Uh, 4a cubed b squared minus 10a squared b to the 5. Yeah? Some of you are like, it's been a while, but I do kind of remember this. Okay. So what we're doing here when we're trying to find a GCF is we're looking at each term in the polynomial and we're saying what's the biggest factor that both of these terms share, right? And what you can do is you can break it apart between the numerical coefficients between the A's and between the B's, right? So between four and 10, what's the greatest common factor? Two, so I'm gonna pull out a two. Between A cubed and A squared, what's the greatest common factor? Yep, A squared, right. And between b squared and b to the 5, what's the greatest common factor? b squared, yeah. Now, some of you, are some of you like legitimately like, I don't remember any of this? Yeah? Okay. So what this comes down to and how you can tell what a greatest common factor is, is you can look at prime factorization. So I'm gonna do this really, really quickly because it's not the most efficient way, but if you see it once, it can help you to identify the greatest common factor quite quickly, okay? So if you look at, and really, we're not really prime factoring because prime factorization really only deals with numbers, but it's sort of an equivalent form, we can say, okay? Because we're breaking each term down into a string of its parts, okay? If you look at 4a cubed b squared, 4a cubed b squared, 4 is 2 times 2, a cubed is a times a times a times b times b. 10 is 2 times 5. And a squared is a times a. b to the 5 is 5 b's. Yep. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so greatest common factor is all of the factors in those strings that they share. Okay, so they both have a two. They don't both have another two, so I'm not gonna underline that one. They both have an A. They both have a second A. They don't both have a third A, so I can't underline that one. They both have a B. They both have a second B. Oh, I missed the first one, oh well. And then I'm kind of done with the first one. Once you're done going through the first one, that's it, there's no factors left to check. Okay, so if I look at what I've got here, I've got a two, I've got A squared, and I've got B squared. That's my greatest common factor. Does that make sense? And I can look at the same, you know, in below, I've got a two, A squared, B squared. Now, if I look at what's left, right, that's going to be what's left inside the brackets. Well, you have to think to yourself, okay, what would I have to multiply 2a squared b squared by to get 4a cubed b squared? 
right? So think, what do I have to multiply 2 by to get 4? 2. What do I have to multiply a squared by to get a cubed? A. And what do I have to multiply b squared by to get b squared? Yep, 1. So that's it. Okay. Minus. Please excuse this interruption. We're just going to start calling grade 12 classrooms only with teachers last names A through Z as in dog. So it's grade 12 teachers only with last names A through Z as in dog. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sir, please make your way to the book room in room 237. Thank you. Okay. Um, 2 times what is 10? 5. A squared times what is A squared? 1. Okay, b squared times what is b to the 5? Two b's times how many b's is five b's? Three b's. Okay, now if you look at what's left here, what did I not underline? In the first one, I didn't underline 2a. That was the first term. In the second one, I didn't underline a 5 and 3 b's. That's 5 b cubed. Okay? Okay, so that's one type of factoring. The second type of factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so let's say we're looking at x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, now whenever you're factoring anything, the first question you should always ask is, is there a greatest common factor between these three terms? No, because the coefficient to the x squared is 1. If one of the coefficients is 1, there's not going to be a numerical greatest common factor, right? And then only the first two have an x in them, right? The third one is a constant. So there's no x greatest common factor. So there's no greatest common factor there, okay? Now, if there's no greatest common factor and it's a trinomial of this form, it's factorable if you can t find two numbers that multiply to a times c and add to b. Does this ring a bell? Yeah. Okay. So a times c here, I'm just going to write the a value in. Normally we don't if it's 1. Okay, but the a value here is 1. So a times c is 1 times 10. So we need to find two numbers that multiply to 10 and add 2. What do they add to? 7. Okay. All right. What two multiplies, what two numbers multiply to 10 and add to 7? 5 and 2. Yep. There's our two numbers. Okay. So this is factorable. All right. Now, once we get to here, there's a number of steps that we could take. If the first term, or sorry, if the, the a value is 1, Okay, you can actually take a shortcut and just plop those two numbers in there. Okay, but if you don't remember that you can take a shortcut, there's, there's other strategies that you can use that will apply to all different types of polynomials because when that first term is not one, you can't take that shortcut. You can't just plop those two numbers in there. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's see, I'm going to pick one that's on here so that we can kind of skip ahead a little bit. Um, let's do this one. 9x squared plus 3xy 
minus 20y squared. Okay, any GCF? Any GCF between those three terms? Nope. Nope, the uh, variables don't have a greatest common factor, and then 9, 3, and 20 don't have GCFs either. Okay? All right, now, is anyone confused by the fact that this is an XY and that's a Y squared? A little bit or no? That's okay. Okay, we can deal with that. If this had been a 7xy and that had been a 10y squared, the difference is that instead of this being x plus 5 and x plus 2, this would be x plus 5y and 10 plus 2y. Okay, so that's the only difference there. So we can deal with this. Okay, so we need to still find our two numbers that multiply to a times c and add to b. Okay. So what's A times C here? A times C? Please excuse this interruption. Just, a remark, just another recall please here for grade 12 teachers laughing A through D as a dog. If you could please make your way to the book room. Also, we'll now take grade 12 teachers who are teaching, currently lesson E through H. Please make your way to the book room to get the book for the student semester. Last name E through H and A through D. Okay, everybody right now needs to know what A times C is. This is what I mean by you have to pick up the pace. You need to look at A, you need to look at C. What is nine times negative 20? Negative 180. What does it have to add to? Adds to? It's the B value. B value is 3. Yeah? Okay. What multiplies to negative 180 and adds to 3? Go. Play around. Okay, 15 and negative 12, correct. Okay, so unfortunately, once you have those two numbers, when the A value is not one, we can't just plunk them in like we did before, okay? So there's a couple of ways that we can deal with this. Um, we can do uh, decomposition, or some people may have learned the box method, or any of those ringing a bell, yeah? Have, how many people have seen both? How many people have seen decomposition? 
How many people have seen the box method? Yeah, Should, do, you, do you guys want me to review both? Okay, so decomposition basically means we're gonna decompose this middle term, okay, in using those two values, okay? So we're gonna break this down into, this one stays the same, 9x squared, and we're gonna go, and it doesn't matter which order you go into, plus 15xy minus 12xy. Okay, now remember, 15 minus 12 adds to three. So this is still three xy. Okay, so we have the same value, and then minus 20y squared. So that's the step where we decompose. Okay? Now what we're gonna do is we are going to factor a GCF out of the first two terms and the last two terms. Okay, so here, our GCF between nine and 15 is three, and between x squared and xy is x. And what I'm left with from here is three x, and from here, is 5y. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now if this is a negative sign, factor the negative sign out as part of your GCF. Okay, so between 12 and 20, GCF is four. So minus four, and between x, y, and y, my GCF is y. And then what's left, from 12xy is 3x. And what's left from 20y squared divided by 4y is 5y. Okay? And what happens is that the 3x plus 5y is a greatest common factor. Okay? This is now the GCF. So we can bring that out in front. And what we're left with is 3x minus 4y. Here's the 3x, there's the minus 4y. And that's factored. Okay, so that's decomposition. The other approach that you can take is the box method. And that one looks like this. So the first step's the same. This part's the same. But what you're gonna do is basically arrange this line over here into a box. It's basically a different sort of graphic organizer. So here's the box. The first term goes over here, 9x squared. The last term goes over here, minus 20y squared. Okay? And then those two terms, the 15xy and the 12 xy or minus 12xy go here and here and it doesn't matter which order you put them in okay um, so maybe I'll put the minus 12xy here and the 15xy here okay then what we're going to do is look at the top row and the left column and we're going to take the GCF out of each one so here the GCF is 3x. And actually, the GCF can go right here. This is the GCF. Okay? And when you take that out, what you're left with is 3x minus 4y. Right? So the idea is that 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times minus 4y is negative 12xy. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing over here. And in fact, this three X up the top is the GCF. So we've actually already done that step. And three X times three X is nine X squared. So three X times what is 15 X Y? It's five Y. And these are the two factors. Three X plus five Y times three X minus four Y, which is what we got over here, okay? 
So uh, two other things that I want to talk about briefly. Um, and actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on to this next page, um, which is where your notes start. Okay. So these are all um, just extra examples. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of these that may look a little bit different. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, difference of squares and perfect square trinomials, but the other one I want to talk about is uh, factoring by grouping. Okay, so let's look at number three over here. Now, do you guys see any GCFs here? Any greatest common factors in number three over here? I know it kind of looks funky on my smart board because I have some issues with these little dots in the screen, um, but maybe look at your notes because it'll be clearer on your notes. Can you guys see any greatest common factors there? Yeah? So there's a three between the nine and the three A and the three B, but there's no three factor of three in the A, B. Can you guys see any other fact, common factors between all four terms? No. Okay. So if you can't see any common factors, it's not a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. It's not a difference of squares, which I know we haven't gotten to, but we will in a moment. So I'll tell you right now, it's not a difference of squares. The only other thing that you can try is something called factoring by grouping. So what you can try and do is group two terms together pairs of two terms together that do have a common factor. Okay, so right now, if you look at the first two terms, there's no common factor between the a, b, and the nine. So maybe what I'll do is I'll reorder these so that, you know, you can reorder addition, subtraction, whatever order you want, right? Three plus five is the same as five plus three. So I'm going to reorder so that I do have terms beside each other that have a common factor. Okay, so maybe I'll write this as, uh, I'm going to switch these. Okay, so AB plus 3B plus 3A plus 9. I'm just going to try that and see what happens. This doesn't always work, but sometimes it works. You could play around. A lot of this course is playing around with algebra. And what you can do now is similar to decomposition, factor a GCF here, factor a GCF here. Okay? So here, the GCF is B. I've got a factor of B in both terms. And what I'm left with is A plus 3. In the last two terms, I've got a common factor of three. And what I'm left with is a plus three. Okay. Now, I have a common factor. I've got this common factor of a plus three. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that out in front. And what's left is b plus 3. OK. Um, all right, so I want to go over three more. And then I'm going to give you guys some time to practice these yourself. Um, I want to go over this one. And I want to go over... Can, oh. Can I have teachers with last names I through M as in Mary for grade 12 students? Can you please make your way to the book room to get your students textbooks for this semester? Last names of teachers I through M going for grade 12. Thank you. Okay, so this one looks kind of complicated. Looks kind of complicated. Um, 
And what you might think of doing here, some people think, oh, I, maybe I should expand so that then I can factor. Okay? But what I see is I see something squared minus three times that same something minus 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a substitution. I'm going to say, let u, or any variable you want, equal 7a minus y. I'm going to let another variable, or you could use b, or you could use anything that's not a or y. u, x, r, t, whatever you want. I've been using a lot of u's lately. I'm not really sure why. Okay, well, this is this bracket squared. So this bracket squared, if u equals that bracket, is u squared. Minus three times this bracket. Well, I've called that bracket u, so minus three u. minus 10. This looks a lot more pleasant to factor. Okay, if we want to factor this, well this a value is a 1. So here we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 1 times negative 10, which is negative 10, and add to negative 3. What multiplies to negative 10 and adds to negative 3? If you're not sure, make a list of everything that multiplies to negative 10. Almost, almost, negative 2 and 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 5. Negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. Yep. Say that again. Yes, negative 5 times 2. Because negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So this is... Uh, negative 5 and 2. Okay, so this is going to factor because this a value is 1, I can just make this u minus 5 and u plus 2. Okay, once I factored it using the u, I have to now sub back in this 7a minus y for u. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make like big brackets. And every time I have a U, I'm going to put in a 7A minus Y. Okay? Okay. So two more types of quadratics that I want to talk about when we're factoring. One of them is a difference of squares, and the other one is a perfect square um, trinomial. Okay, so a difference of squares is exactly how it sounds. It's a difference, meaning that there's what math operation corresponds to difference. Yep, subtraction. Squares means that both terms are perfect squares. Okay, so a difference of squares always takes the format a squared minus b squared. Okay, and this always factors as a plus b times a minus b. 
Okay? And in fact, if you wanted to work it out, you could do it as if you're factoring a, a trinomial where the middle term is zero. So for example, if you wanted to factor this one, we're not going to do this one because this one's pretty simple. Well, we could, right? This is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. So square root of x is x. Square root of 49 is 7. So the first term in each bracket is an x. The second term in each bracket is a 7. One of them's a plus, one of them's a minus. Doesn't matter which, which sign comes first. Because when you're multiplying, again, order doesn't matter. 3 times 5 is the same as 5 times 3. Okay? Now, if you wanted to work out why this is true, do this. the same way you'd factor a trinomial, and you'll see exactly why this works out the way it is. You can do that as an exercise. Okay, I wanna look at this one though. I'm just gonna actually close this. It's very, very noisy in there. Okay, this guy, does this look to you like a difference of squares. Is the first term a perfect square? m cubed, is that a perfect square? No. 25 m a to the 8, is that a perfect square? No. Okay, but I didn't ask the right question first. When factoring, I, you, everybody should always ask one question first when you're factoring anything. What should you ask first? Yeah, is there a GCF? Correct. So take a look at these two terms, m cubed minus 25 m a to the eight. Is there a greatest common factor between those two terms? Yeah, what is it? m, right. So we're gonna pull an M out first. And I'll give you a hint when you're going through this page, there are other polynomials on this page that also have a greatest common factor in them. So you need to make sure you're asking that question first, okay? All right, so when I pull an M out, what's left? What's left from the M cubed term? M squared, yeah. What's left from the 25 m a to the 8 term. Yeah, 25 a to the 8. Okay. Is this a difference of squares? What do you think? Yeah, because m squared is m times m. 25 a to the 8. What would you have to multiply by itself to get that? What times what is 25a to the 8? Yeah. Yes, 5a to the 4. Correct. So this becomes m, m, a to the 4, a to the 4. And this is a plus, this is a minus. There we go, okay? When you're doing this one, we're not gonna do this one together. Pay attention to what we did here. Okay, that's just a hint. Okay? Um, the last thing that I wanna talk about are perfect square trinomials. Um, so let's just do one of them. Oh, yeah, you know what? I wanna talk about this one because I wanna show you something else that you can do when you're factoring that doesn't involve um, finding something that multiplies to a times c and adds to b, okay? Because I'll tell you what, when I was in high school, I never learned that method. Nobody ever taught it to me. It's very systematic, so I quite like it. But what I learned, and if you're really, really strong with mental math, this is really quite quick. I learned uh, trial and error. 
So I wanna just walk you through that because some of you, I'm guessing, are really strong with mental math. And sometimes this is a really fast way of, um, of factoring. Okay, so let's look at this guy over here, 9x squared minus 48x plus 64. Okay, so firstly, are there any common factors? Any common factors? What do you think? No, good, okay. So one thing you can do, I'm gonna show this to you, and again, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Trial and error works like this. You know that these two terms multiply to 9x squared, and these two terms multiply to 64, positive 64. And the stuff adds to negative 40, Eight. Ne negative 48x. So if you're adding to something negative and multiplying to something positive, these signs have to be negative. This is the only way that you can add to something negative and multiply to something positive. Okay? So what you do is you guess and test. What can multiply to 9x squared? Well, it could either be 3x times 3x or 9x times x. That's it. So you plunk them in and you check. I'm going to start with those two. And I tend to personally not start with extremes. The only time I start with extremes, and if you do this enough, you'll start to get a, a, a sort of a sense of it, is if this middle term is incredibly large compared to these outside terms. If this one is incredibly large compared to those outside terms, then I start with extre uh, extremes, okay? Then you say, okay, well, what multiplies to 64? Because these two things, the last two terms, have to multiply to 64. Then you play around with it, right? So what could multiply to 64? Well, you could have um, one times 64. You could have two times 32. You could have 4 times 16, or you could have 8 times 8, right? So I'm not going to start with extremes. Maybe I'll start with 4 times 16. See what happens, okay? So if I put a 4 and a 16 here, let's just see what happens. Now, I know already, by design, these multiply to 9x squared, these multiply to 64. So I don't have to worry about that. What I do have to worry about is this and this. I want to check that that adds to 48x. Okay, so this is four, minus 48x minus 12x. That's negative 60x. That's too big. Yeah? So I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to pick something else. Right? Now, if this is too big, you tend to want them to be closer together, the two numbers closer together. So I'm not going to go in this direction. I'm going to go in this direction. And I'm going to say, okay, what about 8 and 8? Okay? And then I know again, 9x squared, 64, that's by design. So I'm going to go, okay, 3 times 8 is 24, 24. So negative 24 minus 24, that's negative 48. Now I know I've got it correct. Okay, so if you're kind of strong with mental math, this is really fast. Especially if you start to get the hang of, okay, that's not too big, so I know I have to start down here. And the more you practice it, the better you get at it. So it can become really, really fast. Okay, now what I did want to say is that when you have two factors that are exactly the same, this is called a perfect square trinomial because I'm multiplying something by itself. And you can write this as 3x minus 8 squared. Okay? 
All right, so I'm going to leave it at that for today. We're not going to go to the computer lab. I'm going to discuss Delta Math a different day. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is finish off this page. I have this on D2L in the completed notes, and I'm also going to give you a, where is it, a worksheet to do. It's somewhere. I'll hand it out in a sec. And I have um, under content, um, oh no, I don't. The, the answer to the worksheet is on the back of it. There you go, okay? Um, and that's your homework for tonight.